بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما روى الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن عدة الشهور عند الله اثنى عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض منها أربعة حرم ذلك الدين القيم فلا تظلموا فيهن أنفسكم وقاتلوا المشركين كافة كما يقاتلونكم كافة وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ As most of us are aware that we are at the beginning of an Islamic year. In fact, today is the day in which Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu was buried. A fact that many times we neglect about this day and this part of the year. We may have been receiving a lot of messages and then forwarding these messages about congratulating each other about a new Islamic year. And many people then, they ask the questions also, is it allowed? As you know, I don't like getting into fatwas at this time and from this member. We need to talk about things that can help us have a better understanding of who we are and how are we supposed to practice our deen. Without getting into the Sharia rules and laws, you can ask these scholars about that later on. The question, simple question that we need to ask ourselves that when we are congratulating each other, you must have something in your mind for which you are congratulating people. Is it for the past of the last year that you are congratulating everyone? Is it for you are very happy that a new year is coming in? 
is this new year you think is going is bringing something that you were told is going to bring something that we didn't have in the last year and this is why i'm congratulating okay alhamdulillah that year is gone now we got a new year mashallah mabruk what is not about as i said again it's not about fun. it's about i need to understand what is it that you have in your mind when you're saying congratulations on the new year If I look at it from a business point of view, if I was a successful businessman, I did very well during this physical year. A lot of profit, expanded my business, mashallah did good, and everyone comes and congratulates me on having a successful year in my business. I will say, mashallah, go ahead, I need more people to congratulate me on this. Alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. But if this year of my business may have been one of the years, worst years of my business with all the loss in my business and now someone comes and says congratulations on this year are you making fun of me? Are you really trying to insult me by saying that knowing how I did with my business this year and you're saying me you're saying congratulations on this passing of this year when we look at the situation of the ummah and what is it that we gained or we lost during this last year maybe we will need to sit and cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we have lost during this last year. And promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that insha'Allah through our a'mal we will not let these things repeat again in this life. We may have forwarded that message. At least seen it. Do you remember which year is this now? We got into a new Islamic year. Which year is this? 1439. You may think, what does this number has to do with us? It could be 800, 1000, 2000, doesn't make no difference. No, it does make a big difference. You know what this 1439 means? It means we are 1430 years away from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 1430 years away, far from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's time. You know how much that is affecting us? Imam Muslim rahimahullah narrated in his Sahih. On the authority of Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu, that once Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said to Umar radiallahu anhu, after the demise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, اذهب بنا إلى أم أيمن نزورها كما كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يزورها. Let's go and visit Umm Ayman the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit her. Generally, on Jum'ahs, after Salat al-Jum'ah, he used to pay her a visit. So Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhumah, they went and visited Umm Ayman radiallahu anha, she started crying. So I said, Umm Ayman, kinky, what makes you cry? And of course they know, she's missing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Until now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit her at this time. Now, instead of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr and Umar are visiting her. She is missing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in order to comfort her, they said, Do you know ma indallahi khayrun li rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You know, what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got over there with Allah is much better than what he had in this dunya. So he's doing better. No need to cry. 
She said, I'm not crying because I don't know that. I know that too. And I'm happy for for that. But I'm crying. Because as he was amongst us, we used to keep on receiving wahi, direct connection from the heaven. And Jibreel is coming every time. Malaika are coming with revelations. Now that thing is over. We don't have that barakah coming anymore. As she said, this, they both started crying too. Which means within one year, they are missing things that they used to have at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Sayyidina Anas radiallahu anhu says, Lamma qadima Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-madinata adaa minha kulla shayi. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arrived Medina Munawwara, everything illuminated in Medina Munawwara. We saw noor in everything in Medina. We used to see noor in the dust of Medina, in the stones of Medina, in the mountains of Medina, in the walls of Medina. فَلَمَّا تُوفِّيَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, أَظْلَمَ مِنْهَا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ we saw that we missed that nur from everything that we used to see before. He says so much so. Clean the dust from putting the dust on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his qabr. That we realized that there was some change in our heart which means missing that nur that we used to see in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the difference. Just difference of him being there and now he's not there. And after that, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, things will keep on changing and changes will keep passing on coming in everything. That nur of iman, that nur of wahi, those rahmas and blessings, that were there during his time, it will just keep on reducing gradually. Not only this, even during his time, people sitting in his company would have different feeling than those that are away from his company. You remember the well-known hadith of Hamza radiallahu anhu, that he said to Abu Bakr, I am a munafiq. How come Hamza, how can you say this? When I am in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I feel that I see the Jannah and Jahannam. And when I leave the company and go and sit and I'm enjoying myself with my family and my work, my business, I forget all of those feelings. He said, yeah, that happens to me too. Let's go and ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about it. They went and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Sa'atan fa sa'atan ya hanzala. This is not going to be their time all the time. When you are in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the level of iman will be different. When you are away from him, the level of iman will be different. And that level kept on changing and changing. Imagine what must be the change in the year 1439. After 1430 years, from the time he passed away. How much difference must be there? One of these scholars says that when I was young, once I was approached by a very pretty woman for fahisha, for zina wal billah, for a sin, for immodesty, and right away I rejected it. He says, in my old age, one day that thought came back to me. That she should have taken that opportunity that day. And then, I started reflecting on her beauty. And thinking, how come I didn't go for it at that time? And right away I remembered and I started doing istighfar and I asked, started thinking for myself, what changed in me? At that time, when I had the opportunity, when I was strong, young, able to do it, I stayed away from it, and today the thought is coming back to me, how come you didn't take it? 
He said, when I looked at my a'mal, my ibadah, my ilm, everything was improving, alhamdulillah. I was getting better in every avenue of our deen. He said, then I realized it was because that period was closer to the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as compared to today that I'm in. And this change of time, 40 or 50 years only, the difference of the time made so much change in this person's thought. Away from the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, the best time is my time. Qarni, thumma alladheena yalunahum, thumma alladheena yalunahum. Then it will be those who would come after them, then those who would come after them. Thumma yafshul kathib. Then people will stand lying, cheating, deceiving people. All of this will spread after that. The barakah of the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So again, when we ask ourselves, when we say a new year have started, year 1439, it should make us wonder how much we are missing of those barakat and khair and the rahmah that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought with him during his time. And every time you read the hadith about the fitan, they are all connected to time. That a time would come, which means as the rahmah and barakah of his existence, of his teachings will keep on going away, now fitnas will start opening their doors. And we see how fitnas are going on that nowadays. He says, people will start lying, people will start killing each other for no reason. لَا يَدْرِ الْقَاتِلُ فِي مَا قَتَلْ وَلَا الْمَقْتُولُ فِي مَا قُتَلْ He said then the fitnas will go to the level that the killer doesn't know why he killed and the one who's killed doesn't know why he was being killed. No one knows. They're doing it. And then we know our Islamic year is called the Hijri year. What does that mean? It starts with the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Makkah to Medina. Does that calling it hijri year reminds us of something? Does it remind us of the hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I don't want to go into the detail on how is that it? And why hijrah? Our time doesn't allow us. But at least... Have we asked ourselves this question as we talk about a new year? Why did my Prophet do the Hijrah? In what situation did he do the Hijrah? What forced him to do the Hijrah? What was the reason behind that Hijrah? Did he do it to get a more comfortable life for himself? Just like many of us we did. Is he, did he do it just to save his life? He did that hijrah for all of us. To make sure one day after 1400 years we will still be Muslims. He's leaving Makkah Mukarramah. He's leaving the Makkah. And he turns around and he says, Ya Makkah, Ma atyabaki wa habbaki ilayya. Makkah, how nice and clean, pure you are. وَأَحَبَّكِ إِلَيَّا How dear you are to me, O Makkah. وَلَوْلَا أَنَّ قَوْمِي أَخْرَجُونِي مِنْكِ مَا سَكَنْتُ غَيْرِهِ Had my people not forced me to leave you, I would not go and live anywhere else. Does the Hijrah remind us of the three days that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent in Ghar Hira, in Ghar Thaw? How did he survive in those three days? When the whole town is looking for him, when people have set a prize of hundred camels for each of them, him and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, that he is the most wanted people in that country at that time. What was he eating? How was he resting in that small cave between the two of them? Does it remind us of how he climbed the mountain? So much so that with all the wounds in his feet, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu carried Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his shoulder.
Does it remind us of the eight days that him and Abu Bakr are walking on their feet from Makkah to Medina? Eight days you are walking and you are the most wanted person. It's not that you are at least, there is no feeling of fear. Everyone is looking for you. People will sell you. Disbelievers, those who don't care about you, they would sell you for one camel. Here they are getting 100 camels for each of them. What is this hijrah? What does it remind us of? Why we have a hijri year, not a year of milad of the birth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not the year of the staring of the revelation of the first wahi that came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not the year of Mi'raj that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had that great journey. No, it started from this journey of full of sacrifice from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for his ummah. So we as an ummah can appreciate what our Prophet did for us at that time. We can see the sacrifice our Prophet offered for all of us so that we be Muslims today. This is our Hijra year. And if we are really reflecting on these things, if it reminds us of those sacrifices, if it brings tears in your eyes when you see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being surrounded in his home, and each and every person hopes to be the one who would be the first to attack him and kill him. And then when he is walking out of his home to Abu Bakr's house, when him and Abu Bakr are walking out of their home, and now they are hiding in the cave of Thawr, and now three days they are in that cave. We have nothing to eat or drink. Yes, little bit water of and milk that was brought to them by the people, by, by the family of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Then eight days they are walking from Makkah to Medina. All together, the journey, this journey took 28 days. All together from beginning to the end until he, he gets settled in Medina at Munawwara. 28 days, a month. If the Hijrah year reminds us of that, and then makes us appreciate, appreciate our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, develop that love for our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and makes us feel that the way he did everything for us, we are going to do the same for our ummah and for ourselves and for the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa taala, for our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, for his sunnahs, so that we will revive his sunnahs, we will revive his teachings. We will make sure that his teachings will be in people's life and people will understand who this great Prophet of Allah was. What he offered the humanity, not only Muslims, what he has offered the humanity. We need to bring that up into the surface and show people what did this Hijrah brought for the world, not only for the, for the Muslims. If this is what Hijrah means for us, and this is what Hijrah reminds us, and this is what the Hijrah will revive in our lives, in this, then surely congratulations on the new Islam. But we need to ask ourselves a lot of questions. And we need to make sure that we understand this Hijri year, what it means for us. What it meant for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What it meant for the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he is leaving and his daughters are in Makkah. Can you imagine? The mothers have passed away. When he's leaving and his daughters are in Makkah. When he's leaving at a situation when the house is surrounded by those who want to assassinate Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand the reality of our deen. And not just words of mouth. That hijra year. And congratulation on the year. And congratulation of the time. Yes. Congratulations of the new time if we really are bringing better time for our ummah. If inshallah we, having, we are planning and working towards making the ummah to be more successful, making the ummah to be more living in more peace. Do you know how many millions, not thousands, not hundreds, it's millions of people that are homeless during this, that became homeless during this year? How many people lost their life as a result of oppression during this year? How many mothers are crying during this year? How many infants are becoming orphans and became orphans during this year?
time can only speak for itself after it will pass and then we show our actions وَقُلْ اَعْمَلُوا وَقُلْ اَعْمَلُوا All people, all believers do what you have to do اعملوا, do what you're supposed to do فَسَيَرَ اللَّهُ عَمَلَكُمْ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah will see your amal the Rasul, his messenger will see what you have done and people of Iman will see what you have done are we ready for that? Are we ready to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is what I did during this last year? Very successful year for me and my ummah. This is what I did. Allah says, I want to see it. And not only me, I'm going to make the Prophet see what you have done. And not only him, wal mu'minun, a day will come when I will present all of this to all the people of Iman and all of them will see what you have done. May Allah at that time only bring good from us and people don't see any evils from us. May Allah allow us that when that time comes, when our Allah, His Messenger and all the people of Iman will see our A'mal, they will be happy that we did something good during this past year and during our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, always use us for the success of this deen. يقول الله صلى الله سبحانه جل وعلا في كتابه العزيز أعوذ من لا يصلي وسلم دائما